right. That's three for little bro. That's a six, not a G, you idiot. That's sexy forever. That's mine. That's five to two. Gay fever. Welcome to this week's episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. I am proud to announce that this is officially our one year anniversary uh, when it comes to doing this show. So we started this uh, endeavor about one year ago. We have a slew of episodes for everyone to check out. So if you are uh, digging what you're listening to and you want more, you can now check us out on YouTube. Uh, you can also look at us on Anchor. And don't forget to hang out with us on Twitter, Instagram, um, and if you have any suggestions or you want us to watch anything, just email us at two guys and some horror at gmail.com. Now, let's get to the show. As always, I'm here with Clark, my good friend. How are you today, Clark? How are you doing, bud? Doing well, Mr. Curtis. How are you? Doing well. Um, I'm excited. Are you excited for this movie? I am thoroughly, uh, yes, well prepared to discuss this film that I have seen many a time. Perfect. And it is a movie. It is a movie. We're talking about Jeepers Creepers today from 2001. Our writer-director is Victor Salva. It's, this film stars Gina Phillips as Trish, the older sister, Justin Long, Derry. No, not that Derry, you Stephen King nerds. And Jonathan Breck, who is the creeper. And Wait, also... this wasn't... Go ahead. What about... You know, there was Leon Weaver. This wasn't the Wild West movie. Oh shit! Did we did we switch up? Did we watch the wrong films, Clark? Is that what we did? Did I watch? Did I watch the wrong movie? I mean, how many times have you seen? It was a 1939 like oil baron movie, right? Yeah. How many times have you seen that film? I mean, a lot. No, I'm I'm fucking with you. Uh, Yeah, Jeepers Creepers. Uh, I'd also like to throw in an honorable mention, real quick, to. Patricia Belcher, who plays Giselle Gay Hartman, uh, the the lady who has the the foresight, um, the seeing ability. Um, so let's let's go ahead and start breaking some of this stuff apart. The budget for this film was ten million, um, cool. which doesn't seem like a lot for a two thousand one film. Uh, it's a pretty simple story, wouldn't you say? I mean, a brother and a sister. They're just driving through this uh, countryside. It's kind of a back road home, they say, for spring break. And then they end up encountering uh, this awesome flesh-eating creature um, during its ritualistic eating spree. Now, you had a very interesting point that um, when I asked you at the beginning of the show when we did our little pre-show notes uh, about what, what you thought. And I'd love to hear um, you know, your, your thoughts again just on on this movie and and what you think it really is okay sure so the first time i saw this movie was like in 2002 2003 on like the sci-fi channel and to me it kind of felt like a sci-fi movie because you know you have giant octopus versus giant shark or sharknado kind of movies like that and this film kind of showcases like a level of like there, there there are some really scary moments in this film for sure and I'm not discrediting that, but it really feels like a monster of the week kind of X Files episode to me, which are generally kind of the movies that like sci-fi kind of builds out. Um, but that being said, it's still pretty solid. The monster himself, you know, he follows this kind of pattern to absorb other people's like lungs or body parts so it can live forever, and it gets to feed like every 23 years. It's a very cool concept. Uh, I, I think it was just kind of driven in a little bit too long. And uh, they went to like five different police stations, like hyperbole there. But, dude, it, it, it was a bit too long for what it was. Or they could have added to it. I cannot agree with you enough. I feel like this this movie is definitely just an episode of some kind of show on, spy, on sci-fi or some other network. Supernatural. Like yeah, easily. I mean, the creature is the, to me, the best part of this whole movie. Um, don't get me wrong, you know, Justin Long does a great job in his role. Um, Trish does a great job in her role. Oh, but Jonathan Brett kills it as the creeper. Like he absolutely 
just does a oh, knockout a performance. Smile. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, come on. That that screaming part where he's screaming at the police officers, a little goofy. Sure, but it's... It wasn't I mean, his fault. He he didn't have control over the little head tentacles, but yeah. Yeah, and he's doing, a you know, he's giving it over 100%, right? And that's, I yeah, think, yeah. the biggest takeaway for him is that um, he, looking at his career, he doesn't have a lot to it. He's known as the creeper for Jeepers Creepers. He's he's done other things, but nothing to this level. Um and it's cool and it's good. And I think he does a great job as it. But with that being said, that's all there really is to it, right? The creature. So um, totally agree with you. I think Supernatural would have been a great uh, place to, to, to put this. It could have even been a two-parter um, for them. But um, I would have liked it if they got into the, the creature's history a little bit. Not so much as like what he, how he was a demon or anything, but like how he settled in. I, I enjoyed it, but I feel like there are so many holes in it that you don't need to explain to the audience like where he is or where he came from, but at least give us something to kind of go off of instead of this creature is going to eat body parts and he's going to, he's going to gain from them. Oh yeah. And there's a random fucking psychic lady thrown in. Cause why not? Well, someone's got to do the exposition. That's what she was. She was the psychic exposition who was absolutely no fucking help. So with, with that, let's start breaking apart some of these pieces of the film that we yeah. really enjoyed. So, um, I wanted to start at the beginning where it makes most sense, right? So I, I think the, yeah. the opening was awesome. And you text me the night you were watching it and you were just, you were laughing at how, how much uh, the creeper in his hillbilly ugly ass truck was messing with these two kids on the road. I mean, I don't know if I was laughing. It was definitely terrifying for me because I was thinking of myself being in that position and you have this big truck behind you driving like for like from left to right, just kind of veering and then just passes you and then kind of slows down right in front of you. That's absolutely terrifying. And understanding that the creeper's doing that on purpose. He's trying to get them scared so he can, if he can sense whether or not he wants to eat them later on. Like that was absolutely just no fear inducing. I just yeah. get uh, anxiety thinking about someone being behind me like that and veering from side to side and what I would do in that situation. It reminded me a lot of um, the Joyride film with Paul Walker, where they're also on kind of like this back road feel, this countryside road. And um, they had been dicking around with a truck driver on a CB radio. And basically this big diesel truck ends up finding them in their little tiny car and ends up dicking with them on the road and, and swerving back and forth and trying to run them off the road. And um, I mean, that's the whole point of Joyride. That, that is kind of the, the film in a nutshell is this crazy sadistic uh you know truck driver is now taking out this vengeance on paul walker and, and the crew but it's it's got that very similar style setup and and i really enjoyed it in both films i liked how they did it in in each one slightly different mm -hmm. um something interesting about this great opening because i i too I, i've seen this movie far too many times i didn't need to watch it again for the podcast just like you probably didn't and uh i did anyways because i always like to make sure I'm, I'm seeing things correctly. But something that's always kind of made me laugh is the opening to this is um, it's so, it's just completely based off of real life events from the Unsolved Mysteries TV show. So right. in 1990, uh, there was a Michigan resident, Dennis Depew, who became the subject of like a giant police manhunt after murdering his wife. He dumped her body in an abandoned schoolhouse. And the story was, uh, it was like some murder based on an act of vengeance after his wife filed for divorce and uh, divorce. And he decided to shoot her in the back of the head and dump her body. Um, now in Jeepers Creepers, right? The, the, right. the brother and sister see the creeper dump a body behind Gary. the abandoned church. Yeah. Um, so it, it's basically, if you watch unsolved mysteries, the episode from March of 1991, it came out a full 10 years before Jeepers Creepers was even made. And the segment featured a complete reenactment of the uh, Michigan story, which bears a striking resemblance to the first half of the film that we're watching. In the opening sequence of Jeepers Creepers, it was Just almost... driving like that. Like <laughs> well, and some it was, crazy person. Yeah, and it was almost directly lifted from the episode, right down to the specific shots uh, with dialogue exchanges. Where he's dumping bodies in a pipe. Yep. 
So, and the brother All and the right. sister in the film even pass the time by playing that same exact license plate game, um, which to me makes the inspiration for the for the beginning of this film undeniably the the unsolved mystery show, right? Can you like give me a citation of that like exact episode at some point too? Because yeah. I'm, I'm interested in checking this out myself. You know what? For like, the viewers we as well. Put it in the description. Yes, I will. It's on YouTube. You can watch the um, the open, and they they. I mean. I'll link it in the description. It'll be there. Um, that way the viewers can check it out as well. That's very interesting. Yeah. Kind of interested to check that out. So fascinating. If I do say so myself. A little bit more about I, that scene. So when Derry falls down the pipe. Right. Um, so when, when dude, I love that scene, by the way. Like the rats and everything. He's freaking out because there are a couple rats. How did the rats get like down that pipe and up it? when he just kind of falls down. So the, the pipe is one of those rigid pipes. It has like the weird, you know, bevels or whatever. I'm assuming yeah, as yeah. a rat, you have superpower climbing. You're so, you're so small that you, you should still be able to go up and down that pipe probably just fine. But a person From like upside a human, down, maybe not. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't remember seeing anything I, for them to grab either. The rat. Yeah. It was kind of just like that pipe was just kind of sticking through there so but but he makes he falls down and you're saying about this scene specifically like with the body parts i'm assuming no so i was i was just going to talk about the cinematography when he falls oh like, i i mean i love that shot how it's like that slow motion that weird mm. angle panned out of him falling flat on his back and the way the light because the sewer pipe is the only light into that area it's you know that perfect circle of him falling down and then everything around him is just pitch black. Um, I mean, I would lose my shit if I fell into a hole or, or a sewer pipe like that and then couldn't see anything around me for a minute. And I've lost my breath. And, you know, all the 20 things that led up into that moment. Yeah. Uh, it would just and the creeper, would kill me. This is the pipe the creeper threw the body down, right? Or the body's down. Yes. Yeah. And, he's, and he's there's the nothing. just tossed it. There's nothing in there. Like, did the creeper have time to kind of clean up and move the bodies, like, afterwards? Because, like, Justin discovers, or, sorry, Derry discovers more as he's kind of trying to leave the tunnel, but in that specific area where he fell, it was kind of empty. Yeah, I mean, I would have expected to see the white sheet with the blood stains on it that the creeper had yeah. tossed down there. Um, But, yeah, but as he, he does see bodies down there, like, eventually... There's that one guy who's kind of whispering at him, right? Mm -hmm. It's the one from the from the sheet. Yeah. So he cuts it open and he sees him, and the guy's all, you know, stitched up. He's all cut up and sewed. Yeah. So Creeper's basically, like the eating. creeper had exacted, you know, whatever he needed out of the body, ate it, and then that's where he was going to dispose of the the rest of it. Basically, mummified the guy. Well, so yeah, that's the interesting part. So he he almost looked like he was at the beginning process um, of of whatever the creeper does to them. But the couple that the creeper killed 20 years prior that we hear the cautionary tale of teens driving drunk, right? Um, their bodies are down there. The guy is completely whole. And the girl, her head was re-sewed onto a new female body. And he even stitched their arms together. And because she lost know, her head, made him. They sewed it back on. <laughs> also, it's also a good quote when he comes out of there, and he is so. Oh man, he is so distraught, dude. He is talking absolute nonsense. He is a wackadoo to everyone until the creeper <laughs> shows up and decides to murder several police stations full of people. Yeah, it was it was a uh, super interesting the way that the beginning of this movie is just so good in my opinion it's it's the better it's the better half i don't even give this movie three acts I, I give it two acts realistically but the beginning of this movie is so much better to me than the the second half of this film where they're spending yeah. most of the time just running around trying to figure out what's going on but one of the best scenes i think or the most fun that we get in this movie is when the police car is following Derry and trish back to the church after they leave the diner and the creeper lands on top of the police vehicle and just ruins everybody's night. 
when he makes out with the severed head and chews its tongue out. Like, I think that is probably the most horrifying scene because he just picks it up and he looks at it and he starts making out with it and then he rips the tongue out and just devours it. And the main characters are just staring at him the entire time. It's like, Trish is just like, I don't know what's going on in Trish's head. She's just like looking at him going, ah. So that's what he's doing. He's eating people. Right? Well, I mean, she, she has to be absolutely scared, like just scared out of her mind. You know what I Dude, mean? Dude, but like, Derry's the one who's being a little bitch the entire film, and she's the one final girl girling it up. And so she's the one that runs him over like several times, right? And then mm-hmm. the wing kind of flops out. And I think, I think that moment, that scene is probably the best scene in the entire film. The next like hour is kind of just slow paced. We get introduced to the psychic and all that, and it's just kind of. So we'll break down the psychic here in a second. We'll we'll bring her up. Yeah. We'll give her we'll give her her fair uh, air time. But I want to talk to you about the meta references. I noticed there's two specific. Um, so so when Derry initially wanted to climb down that pipe, right, mm-hmm. going into the creeper's house of pain, which is what it's called. Yeah. Um, Trish, Trish says to him, you know, the part in scary movies when somebody does something really stupid and everybody hates them for it, this is it. So that's mm-hmm. the first time that I was like, man, that's really meta. Like that's knowing what a horror movie is. That's understanding that, uh, what you're about to do could be you being in a horror movie, not in the sense that she literally says that we're in a horror movie, but that she recognizes that there's a the potential that this is a horror movie esque moment. Um, the second oh, time, man. though, is that car hit when when they run the creeper over with the car, and Derry asks if he think if she thinks it's dead, right. and Trish responds that they never are, which is a, another total yeah, moment. Yeah. <laughs> she runs him over like four times, and like the wing pops out. It, dude, it, I get it. Yeah, one hundred percent, a very meta comment. I'm there's glad a, you pointed that out. There's a I third one. I forgot about it. Yeah, there's a third one where I'm not 100% sure if I would say it's totally meta, but it made me think of Scare Package. So one of the rules in Scare Package that the that research lab or whatever was going through was that a car can't start if the killer is within a certain meters of the vehicle. Oh. So when Trish uh, is waiting for, for Derry to get back out of the, the House of Pain, so this is still all revolving around Derry being down in that in that hole. Um, she thinks that the the truck is coming back, um, beating you, and she goes to that. She runs to her car and she tries to start it, and it won't start. It ends up not being the creeper. It ends up being um, just some other truck that looked similar to it. But in my head, that decided like, does that mean that the creeper is then still within the certain meters? So then she can't start the vehicle. I don't. I don't know if it follows that trip. No, it just made me that laugh. Conveniently, that car has <laughs> had trouble that entire film right? starting, and, and like, it continues. It's very very it continues. much established. Hey, this car's a fucking lemon. It's probably not going to last the entire way throughout. Um, Which is also a good trope. You know, it's also a good horror movie trope. Uh, they were always the able shitty to car. start the car, though. It always ended up working out, right? All right, so I mean, let's go just ahead. Give you the little, little stress there, but yeah, yeah. they, they no, want I your heart. I wanted to go back to the house boop, of pain, boop, like boop, real boop. quick. Yeah. What did you think of all the bodies being like up in the ceiling and everything? I thought that was really cool, very well done with the special effects there. One hundred percent agree. I don't think I can say anything poorly about that do you, scene. Do you think those are real people just kind of like hanging on the floor, or so I know like, how was that even done? I know for a fact that there were real people in there. Um, yeah, just because it definitely looked like it. Well, the director, um, has a cameo where he's actually one of the dead bodies in the house of pain. Um, and they're all sewn together. So that must've taken quite a bit of effort. Definitely. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean, I think the, whoever did the effects for the film did a great job. I didn't look too much into the effects cause the creeper itself is amazing, but whoever, you know, worked on the special effects and the, I, creativity it's amazing it's really the good creeper needed a little bit more work honestly a little bit more work otherwise it was good like i, I felt like kind of the you can kind of see the zippers type monster like it was you could tell he was wearing makeup you could tell it was, it was all that which is you know suspended suspend your your 
disbelief and all that, but fair enough. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, not, I'm not, yeah, it's not perfect. We know it's not perfect, but I, I mean, I like what have we you got seen out that, of it. <laughs> have you seen that movie Mimic? Uh, with no. the roaches kind of like they're the giant bugs that kind of imitate people a little bit like they look like they're wearing trench coats i kind of liked that the vibe from that and maybe i don't know man like it was it was good but like there there could have make him make him seem a little less human or more human i don't know otherwise yes agree 100 percent. effects were fantastic in this film yeah, I think because he's eating human, you know, body parts and and organs and all that, you want him to look a little more human because he's taking over whatever that part is. For instance, when he kills the prisoner or the jail the the guy in the jail cell, and he ripped he bites off like half of his arm or whatever. Half of that dude's tattoo's missing, and then later when you see the creature driving the car puts his hand on the steering wheel and the hand had re yeah, back. Tattoo. You can see the other half of the tattoo because he basically is just absorbing it. And then it, that's the piece that grows out. So, yeah. Um, the continuity is, is pretty stellar. They do a really mm-hmm. good job of keeping the, the idea there, whether the effects were perfect. Um, I think we can agree that, you know, there's, there's always room for improvement. I, I did love that. I loved it. The creature gets completely damaged and destroyed and it just eats people's body parts to get back in that prison. And then, yeah, then all hell breaks loose. So personally for me, the the jailhouse scene is where it just gets really slow. I'm not a big fan of how they, they treated that scene. It seemed like there was, it was only there really to allow the creeper to gain his strength back for the final act. If you can even say this film has a final act. Um, and then after doing some research, I kind of, I kind of realized why, right? So I was telling you right. before the show that when the director arrived, they cut his budget, um, or his financing by a million bucks and right. that forced him to cut 20 pages of his script, which all came from the end of the film. So the idea there was that there would be a fiery climax between Derry, um, and the creeper's truck basically. So he'd get behind the creeper's truck and then drive it into oncoming into an oncoming train which would be like a suicidal attempt but also to de- to destroy the creature so that whole you know end got cut and we got what we got and i i'm okay with what we got i just wish we would have got there a lot faster <laughs> i don't disagree i don't disagree at all i feel like once we get introduced to the creeper justin long leaves the place they talk to the police there's so much downtime between in like several confrontations with the creeper. I got the point once, once we meet the psychic lady, that's when we're like, man, I'm really exasperated at this point, And I really don't want you here to give me the exposition. I'd like, so, I'd like something else to deliver it because you're kind of overacting and over hamming it up. And right now I'm sold on the creeper, but I don't know. Yeah. I think she's there primarily for, for, Maybe two reasons. Yeah. So exposition is one for sure. Cause she gives us yep. the every 23 years for 23 days, which, okay, perfect. Great. We could have fi- figured out another way to do that. Right. Um, but the other reason is to sell that song. Jeepers creepers. Yep. <laughs> because Jeepers creepers. Where'd you get those peepers? I loved it when she sang. Right. Uh, we so get, and we get two versions. I love it. And we get two versions of the song. We get a nice throwback vinyl. Um, and then we get the the '90s remake. And then we get creepers, the... <laughs> creepers. Yes. Uh, so the the vinyl version is on my uh, fall list playlist for for Spotify. So I always I always listen to that song. Um, the '90s one, not so much. I don't even know if it's a real version or if they just kind of did that little sample. Probably for the movie. on the soundtrack for the movie. I'll have to look. If you want to find it, I I have no interest in hearing it. I just kind of heard on the radio when the truck was behind them, and I was like, yeah, all right, <laughs> whatever. The exposition lady, though, like, she did nothing the whole film. I give she, her an honorable creeper, mention, but um, yeah, for the me, creeper smelled it's... her, and then he ran away, and he's like, what's the point of you? <laughs> Why are you even in this movie? I, yeah, I think for me, the the, you know, she did warn them. She she tried to tell them, but I, I loved her her acting. I know you're saying she's hamming it up, and I don't disagree. But at the same time, there's that sense of like care and 
she doesn't know these people, right? She doesn't know these people at all. No. But she had a she vision. She want them to die. Right. And when she looks, when she tells them that she hears one of them screaming when that song is playing and one of them dies, um, there is an odd moment where she looks, they ask her, like, who, who, whose voice did you hear screaming? And she looks at Trish. And everybody, I mean, you ask anyone who's seen this movie, you know, think back on the first time. No, you're good. Think back on the first time they watched it. And they'll tell you, I thought Trish was going to be the one taken. But she looks away from Derry because she can't stand looking in his eyes knowing that he is going to be taken. And it's probably even better because she can't look him in the eyes because she knows his eyes are the eyes that are, you know, that the creepers after (laughs) It's crazy when you put those together after watching it a few times. Um, so let's give the cat lady some airtime because I think she has the best oh, quote. Yeah. The best quote in the She's in the, the movie. best character in the film. I get off my property. Don't tell me how many cats I can can or cannot have on my land. She's a fucking badass who owns way too many cats. And she's like, I don't want the fucking police on my property. <laughs> and she's the, she, when when the creeper shows up, is it just me or does she shoot him in half? She tries. And then <laughs> she sure tries. I'm pretty sure he exploded when she shot him, though. Like the when old he scarecrow, from the scarecrow, yeah, and all old, that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he blew up. They used some special effects to blow him up, and then he kind of pops in the house, and then he's fine. So maybe he ate some cats. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I. The way I see that scene, she she shoots at it because that's my favorite quote. Actually, is when she sees the creeper on the post in her field, yeah, yeah. and she goes, "That's not my scarecrow." And then they're trying to <laughs> tell her, like, "Calm down, calm down, don't you know, get away from it, get away from it." And then she just blasts it with her double double barrel shotgun. That and, shotgun uh, does more damage to the creeper than anything else. I'm gonna say. I mean, I'll take that. Yeah. I, I'm the, pretty sure she got back up after that. Like she's just like, ah, oh, he thought he killed me, but I'm I'm too fucking resi- resilient. I mean, the creeper's pretty resilient. <laughs> That's but for sure. The old lady is too, though. Like, look at all those cats she has, and I'm, she's not I, crazy. I bet you anything, those cats licked her wounds, and she turned into Catwoman, and then that's. <laughs> That's where Fucking Catwoman cat really woman. came from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is the weirdest like transformation mation scene in all the Batman movies. Just like, well, Jeepers Creepers four up. is Catwoman versus the Creeper. I mean, everyone knows. Is that. it really? Yeah, we're just waiting for it. You know, fan fiction. It's a fanfic. You're gonna have to write that now. If I do, it'll Get become a romance. To... Get someone to act it out. Um. I'll play the uh, the elderly villain who's white because you know the white guy has to be the villain, um, and just to match the uh, <clears throat> it's always a rich white guy in all all movies like Die Hard, um, any '80s police movie really. Anyhow, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I don't have anything else really uh, specific that I wanted to hit. So the the last thing is the end credit scene. So I don't want to jump there just yet. If there's anything you want let's, to talk about beforehand, let me know. Let's talk about the parents because he, Justin Long's character is carrying laundry back, you know, home. They're going back to meet their parents, you know, and the sister's very independent. Justin Long's character, Derry, is kind of, like a mama's boy is what I would say. He's bringing back laundry for his mom to do. And the creeper ends up sniffing it. But how much how much kind of contact do you feel you got with the parents to kind of get to know their characters, even though we never actually get to meet them? Um, They seem like your typical parents to me. Like, uh, not I mean, you don't you don't really get a lot of. Yeah, you don't get a lot of info. So I wouldn't say I know the parents or understand the the idea behind the parents, but I mean they seem caring. They seem like um pretty pretty standard uh, you know, involved parents. Like the whole goal is or their whole goal is to be there for you every step of the way so that way you can succeed in life, right? So I I kind of got the idea that Derry was perceived as the fuck up of the family 
from the way that the father was talking to uh, Trish's character or Trish <clears throat> in the uh, the police station. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when they're they're in the final confrontation in the the final police station and <clears throat> the creeper just kind of before he kind of shows up she she's talking to her brother and he's like did dad think i wrecked the car and she's like yeah he did and uh i don't know i get the feeling like he has a very loving relationship with the mother but his relationship with the father is kind of like hey you're kind of a screw up get your shit together I mean, and that feels like a very is just him. typical relationship with the father, son, father, or son, mother, kind of. I don't know. I can relate because I feel like my mother and I have a very great relationship. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like my father and I, like, I'm always just assuming that he thinks I'm a total fuck up. <laughs> like, well, it doesn't matter how I hard I try. it's just interesting. <laughs> I think it's just interesting the way that they kind of painted it without ever introducing actual actors or characters themselves. Just giving us an idea of these kids have parents, they're heading home to meet them, and we actually get enough contact with the parents without ever hearing from them personally to kind of build up the relationship. And that was nice to have. <clears throat> I, despite the ending, you know, kind of the final confrontation where everybody's shooting the creeper, the creeper's murdering and eating everyone. Uh, he decides to take Justin Long away, and I know we want to go to the end credits scene, but um, had this movie like not ended the way it did, how do you think? Like, what, how, what would you add to kind of fix it, Curtis, to make it feel more complete? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily add. I, I wouldn't add anything personally. This this movie runs way too long for what it is. If anything, I'm I'm cutting more, and I'm turning this into either a an indie under an hour style film or right around an hour versus an hour and a half. Really? Um, yeah. Or I'm selling the rights for it to go be a TV show somewhere on some kind of show that allows creature feature type weeks. Um, I, I, I think the ending is the weakest part though of the film. See, I, I don't, I don't mind the ending. I just think if we got there faster, I'd be okay. I, what I think should have happened is like, like you're saying, maybe we should cut some of the middle out instead of having that cop who's like, oh, golly, gee whiz, I don't believe you have the, the final confrontation with the creeper happen earlier. And then from there, have like a rescue operation that fails or something along those lines. Like that would have been a bit more fulfilling to me instead of having like Trish like be in the hospital talking to her parents and heading back home with her brother being dead. And then nothing that they can do yeah i mean this definitely doesn't have a positive ending right right yeah i don't i don't mind your ending either that'd be that'd be totally fine with me i mean this movie just felt it felt a little incomplete which is okay um well we know it's not complete good good luck (laughs) on the sequel (laughs) (laughs) the third one fantastic best of the series I haven't seen it. I know you say it's not great, but uh, we'll find out someday. Yeah, Jeepers Troopers 3, uh, for me, is is not not where it's at. It was a rushed project, made-for-TV film. Uh, I believe it was done by Sci-Fi. And Sounds just like doesn't, it, yeah. just doesn't have the same feel as Jeepers Creepers and Jeepers Creepers 2. But Trisha um, comes back, man. Love of my life. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. 23 I, years later. <laughs> Gina Phillips is a hottie. Hey man, I I said that, but I mean you're married, may get in trouble. Nah, admitting that women when, are attractive. Nope, that's <laughs> not that's not how good relationships work. Um, no, I'm joking with you. <laughs> so another, um, just a fun fact for you about the end there with Justin Long and the creeper. Uh, when when Justin Long's head is there and the eye sockets are missing, um. The creeper pops up behind, right? That's actually not Jonathan Breck at that moment who plays the creeper. It's actually Justin Long in the makeup at the end. Um, And I thought that was really smart because you want to see Derry's eyes one last time because that's what the creeper took from him, right? Yeah, I'm glad that was Justin Long at the very end. I was thinking that. I was like, you know, it would have been really cool if that was Justin Long. I'm glad you said that because I actually thought that. That's really cool. Very clever how they chose to do it. 
Okay, so the end credit scene same thing. sets up, because you're a genius, sets up uh, Jeepers Creepers 2, in my opinion. You know there's going to be a sequel. So the end credit scene is the sun yeah. setting uh, on the day, and as uh, the sun is setting, the beating you truck drives by uh, and blares its horn one last time at the audience. So if you haven't seen that, uh, it's like an eight-second clip. It's at the very end of the credits. Uh, check it out. It's worth It's worth a little watch, just so you can get that. I've seen everything this film has to offer kind of a, a feel. Um, oh, and that's I'm, all I got. Love it. <laughs> love it. No, this is a fun movie. It's, yeah. Well, and I love watching it heart. around this time of year, you know, for me, because, um, you know, during September, this is when Arizona's cornfields are kind of at their, their end peak. Um, all the All the corn is grown. Uh, it's ready to be harvested. And... As you're driving around some of these areas in Chandler where I live, um, you can see the cornfields as you drive by, and it's kind of nice because it always makes me think of Jeepers Creepers and the and the farmland, that rural countryside, which is so silly because it's not even filmed anywhere near like a countryside. It's filmed in Florida, um, so that's that's just crazy. Um, okay, cool. Well, if you don't have anything else uh, specifically about any scenes or quotes or anything like that. I think it's time that we could move to fun facts and trivia. Okay. Let's cool. Do it. All right. I got a slew of stuff here. So the director wrote the main characters as brother and sister in order to eliminate any sexual tension and keep them focused on escaping the creeper. Great and job. We, and we saw how that no was sexual out. tension at all. The creeper's single line of dialogue was sadly cut from the film, but it can be seen in the deleted scenes. The creeper can actually talk or. Uh, I mean, the idea was they were going to give it a line, but they decided, you know, probably better not to. And I think that's a good choice. But if you did want to see Check what, out. if you did want to see what it could sound like, uh, it's on the deleted scenes. So Trish and Derry. Buy the movie. Um, yeah. Or you just borrow it from someone who owns it like me. Along with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Massacre. I have Massacre. that here for you. Massacre. Wheaton. Uh, Trish and Derry were not allowed to meet Jonathan Breck before filming. Um, and, I mean, this is pretty normal in, I think, horror films. A lot of times when you want a uh, an authentic reaction to, um, you know, seeing the villain for the first time. But they also didn't get to see the beating you truck before the opening scene was shot. So... When Phillips first saw the truck, she she said something to the effort or the effect of like, "Is that the truck? Jeepers, that's creepy." Um, I don't know if that's really one hundred percent true, but um, it's a fun fact for you. Jeepers, that that's is so creepy. creepy. I just I love don't it. think that she would say something like that. Jeepers, Mister, that is creepy. That's funny. So Jeepers Creepers is actually like a Christian um, based like phrase back in the t the 20s or 30s or something um instead of saying jesus christ you would say jeepers creepers and then something else came along after jeepers creepers and they decided ah don't you know we won't use that anymore we use this other thing i can't remember what it was but um i read that somewhere that wasn't even a list of fun fun facts and trivia you just made me think of it oh wow. In, uh, in Giselle's living room, when she's calling Derry at the diner, the director's high school graduation picture is the doctored up record album from the 1950s with Jeepers Creepers on it. Um, the name of the diner where Trish and Derry stop is called Opper, which is a tribute to Barry Opper, the producer of the movie Critters, who also collaborated on this film. When... That's really cool. When Derry is looking at the missing persons poster in the police station, there are several comedic comments, such as Tim Sullivan's hair being Dusty Beaver and his occupation being a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker, among others. Hmm. Uh, Justin Long's first horror film. That's actually quite interesting. Um, despite being portrayed as a college student, Trish's character, or Trish, played as uh, played by Gina Phillips, was actually 30 years old at the time of filming. Yes, 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 I I, I saw that. <laughs> she was born in 1970. 
I guess she just stayed in college for a really long time. Um, yeah. This was Justin go. Long's first leading role. He was also 22 at the time of filming this film. Was this when he was doing the uh, the Macintosh computer commercials when he was the Mac and other people were PCs? I think that was before this. I think it was during. Let's go to the board. Claim to fame. <laughs> Let's figure it out. Uh, when Derry and Trish are on the road, they see the license plate beating you and they take it as beating you. But later in the film, they realize it can also be meaning or be taken as be eating you, uh, which is actually quite great because that's what the creeper does. <laughs> and the last fun fact that I haven't already thrown at us is that Jonathan Breck, who plays the creeper, um, can be seen at around the one hour, 11 minute mark without makeup on a- appearing as one of the policemen in the final uh, police station. So uh, he didn't have to play the creeper. He also was a police officer. And that's it. That's all I got. You got to show his face in the film too. Yeah. 10 out of 10. It's a good looking face. He's a handsome dude. Jonathan Breck. So I need to know the line though that the creeper, the creeper said. Because I've been looking it up like while we've been talking. And I can't find it anywhere. Uh, let's what see. does the creeper so go to say? The, go to IMDb. Go to quotes. And then it should be in there. That's where I found it. Let's see. Creeper. Uh, she don't smell too good, Darius. The creeper. Deleted scene. Uh, dude, I love it. It's when he's holding Darius. up the cat lady. <laughs> she don't smell too good, yeah. Darius. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I, and- If he has a southern man's accent, I will be so happy. What's funny is you can actually see his mouth moving too during that scene when he's holding her up and walking her out the front door. You can see his lips moving, um, but they cut the audio. And then when you roll back and watch the deleted scene, you get to see it in its full glory. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all for fun facts and trivia. So the next segment in our show is usually, what have you been up to lately? So I'm going to ask you, Clark the hell you been up to lately well a lot has gone on in my life recently it's been a whirlwind i decided to cut my hand with a mug that was fun uh lost my phone yeah it's been okay man doing pretty good work's going great we're going on vacation next week gonna be in san diego just gonna can i enjoy the beach as safely as we can wearing masks of course gonna have a you know much needed vacation after all this isolation from covid good yeah i mean it's always it's always good to get out and do um some kind of things that remind you of what normal looks like um you know we're recording this on labor day literal labor day uh this episode will be coming out towards the end of september um and the you know a lot of the fear right now across the country uh, is that the coronavirus cases will surge again because people are going out for Labor Day, so it's very wise of you to take your vacation uh, after Labor Day is over and and I hope it works out for you, man. I hope it's very relaxing. I hope you don't have to stress right. about other people being up in your business. Um, and yeah, so lately I haven't been doing a whole lot of anything. I mean, I always do. You know, Fridays at twelve we're doing. Uh, live tweets uh, with the mutant fam and the horror fam on Twitter. Um, Boomer's been hanging out with us uh, as we do those. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun. It's really nice to have um, someone consistently in there, always chit chatting as well about the films. Um, oh, but, cool. you know, lately I've just been kind of chilling and hanging out with the daughter playing the Switch. Um, we did. We just got Splatoon 2 for the Nintendo Switch, nice. and she's she's loving it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, I'm just spraying into a paint. Kid into a squid. <laughs> squid kid, squid kid. I'm just spraying paint everywhere, so I have no idea what I'm doing. But yeah, just chilling, just having fun. Um, so I'm going to try and keep that going for a while. All right. Man. I think now uh, we already plugged our socials at the very beginning. Um so I don't really think we need to do that again. What do you think? Sounds good to me, man. Cool. 
Well, that's all we have for you guys this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed talking about Jeepers Creepers or listening about Jeepers Creepers as we talked. Um, Clark, anything you want to say to the, the listeners as we bid them farewell? Stay frosty, my friends. Stay frosty, my friends. I, I have nothing other than that. Uh, have, a, have a wonderful whatever it is. Beep.